everyone's favorite royals, the Sussexes, are at it again with a rebrand. They've launched a new website. And the reason that it's making news is because we see, we get a window into how the couple sees themselves. They insist they are, quote, shaping the future through business and philanthropy. The about page reads, the office of Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. I thought we hated royal life. Um, And then they go on to talk about themselves. I'll give you a couple highlights. He is someone, okay, give him this one, served 10 years in the British Armed Forces, check. New York Times bestselling author of Spare, a memoir of his life told with compassion, vulnerability, and unflinching honesty. And she is, the Duchess of Sussex is, a feminist and champion of human rights and gender equality. Don't forget family care. Family care. That was in there. That's big. Big, big with her. Uh, I'm I'm trying to figure out, it's sort of the rebrand to the rebrand to the rebrand to the rebrand. The link is sussex.com which also then links to sussexroyal.com, which the queen told them to stop using immediately when she was still alive. (laughs) So this all feels sort of in line with, um, I don't know if you saw it, but a couple of days after Prince Harry was sort of um, shunted back to the United States after his very brief summit with Prince Charles, 30 minutes, uh, Meghan was shot by the paparazzi in her Range Rover, like smiling dementedly. Like this week had been such a great win for them. This week you're talking about when he went over there to see yeah. his father yeah, after yeah. the cancer diagnosis? Yeah. I did not see that. So she's like got this wide eye, smile and she's driving and it's like this week went great for them as if Brand Sussex had not been thoroughly shut out by the royals um, in a week in which Charles is esteemed biographer, well-sourced, basically, Charles Feeding, was told that the visit was actually tolerated and not really wanted, that he sort of barged his way in there, that it wasn't that dire of a diagnosis, that he had just begun treatment. He had his plans and his schedule. And if you think about, if you've ever known anybody who's had a catastrophic illness, Really, the priority is what that person wants, not what the loved ones feel they must do. And then so suddenly the headline became Harry Rushes Home. And it makes it look dire. It makes it look like he has access. And, you know, the one piece of information we know that the royals do not want the gruesome twosome to have access to is what is really wrong with Kate Middleton. Mm -hmm. Because that seems to be something quite serious. That, that's also bizarre. I mean, I, everyone continues to speculate. What is it that puts a healthy woman who is, what, 40? 42. Yeah, in the hospital for almost two weeks. They say it's not cancer. What is it? What happened to her? Why won't they tell us? It's very strange. But you're right. The last thing in the world they'd want is for Harry and Meghan to get wind of any of it. So he was there all told with his father for, what, 45 minutes? Maybe I, that was what we initially thought. It might be more like 30 minutes. And within two seconds, it was leaked to the press that he was on his way back to England. It was also leaked to the press that he would welcome a meeting with William. Oh, sure. So the leaks of the paltry amounts of information and access they have were already happening. There was no sort of, I'm, I'm going to rebuild this with you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, every, I'm a vault. So what do you think this means for when William becomes king? I think we got a preview of what Harry and Meghan's life is going to be like under a King William. I think he'd be the fifth, perhaps. I think they'll be completely shut out. They will not be welcome. If they come back for something ceremonial, I mean, if they were to come back for, hopefully this is long in the offing, uh, Charles's funeral, for example, one would imagine they would be seated way back in the second or third row, hidden behind some plumage as they <laughs> were at the that? coronation. How could we forget? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So I think, you know, that was, um, the message could not have been clearer to Harry and Meghan. You are not needed, nor are you wanted. And I think that this rebrand is a direct reaction to that because they're all, re- they're just, those two are like all id. They're just reactionary. They cannot seem to process information and 
move forward in a strategic way. Instead, we get this lengthy CV about what incredible accomplished people they are. With nothing in there other than his military service, which I'll give him, nothing in there. She's touting how she guest edited British Vogue in July, 2019. That was when they were at their height of popularity, which was the fastest selling copy in the magazine's history. Okay, that, all right, that's- I would fact check that. I don't know that I buy that. <laughs> um, they, <laughs> um, the, the descriptions on themselves, we've got to go over, but a point on what you just said, their problem's not branding. That's not it. It's not, oh, we ruined Sussex Royals. We've got to come up with just Sussex.us. Your problem's not about your brand name. It's about what you've done to the brand that was given to you, Sussex. By the way, some of their defenders are like, that's their last name. Isn't their last name Mount Butt Batten Windsor? Is that's that's the last name of Charles and William and Harry. I like d- does your last name change into the Duke area you are you control? I don't know. In any event, she claims to be a feminist. And I have to pause here because I realize she wants us to believe this, Maureen, but you and I have been watching her ridiculous podcast and behavior and attacks on Kate Middleton long enough to know she's a feminist only so long as it helps her look good. But that whole Omid Scobie book is, we believe, Meghan Markle feeding him the nastiest things we've ever read about Kate Middleton. Not only Kate, but, you know, and she 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 slid the knife in during that Oprah interview with the weighty Katie. She said that, and Kate made me cry. Um, but if you're such a feminist, what about showing reverence and um, true appreciation for the queen who gave her life. She didn't ask for it. She was born into it. She took it with the utmost seriousness. And instead, we got that deep mocking curtsy mm-hmm. in the Netflix special that just oozed contempt and ridicule. She's not a feminist. She's as much of a feminist as she is someone who's very invested in whatever the term family care means. I've never heard it. I don't know what it means. I don't know if it's a public policy pronouncement. I don't know. I don't know but if, if you're if you consider family care successfully severing all ties to your own family of origin, save your mother, and successfully severing your husband's ties to his family of origin, one of a historic lineage that you are depriving your children of ever knowing then sure, you're, yeah. you're great at family You care. got it. She um, accused Kate of having baby brain. She called her rigid, pointed out how formal she is versus Megan, who's a hugger. And then came the Omid Scobie, he's their stenographer book, outright calling Kate cold and saying she ignored Megan's desperate pleas for help. And by the way, um, Valentine Lowe, who's the biographer, he has documented and not just him, but there have been a few biographies of, uh, zeroing in on Megan's behavior. The amount of staff she's chased out, all women, how she made them cry, her tantrums, um, her tirades, young women being broken uh, by her and her and her husband's behavior. How is that in any way a feminist trying to lift up the young women? I mean, at least people like, I don't call myself a feminist. I. I treat everybody the same. If you're good, you'll get praised. If you're shitty, I'm going to say something about it. But she wants us to believe she would never, she only lifts up the young women. Well, she also wants us to believe she's a foremost advocate for mental health, which there's no better way to break someone's mental health than abuse them at work (laughs) and make them feel like they're going to lose their job and reputation at any given moment. You know, so it's... um, It's fantastic. And I also, when you you mentioned the um, the Vogue that she edited, whatever, in quotes... Um, but I, I, I was thinking about the most recent British Vogue cover, which has all of these female legends on it. And they gathered in one space in London, which is incredibly hard to logistically do. You got People Victoria Beckham. Oprah Winfrey, Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell. You know, I think there were 50 women. It was a tribute issue to the editor-in-chief, Edward Ennefel, who is leaving, who edited that issue with Megan. He invited her. Absent on this cover is one Megan Markle. Mm. I think there were ashtrays at dawn in Montecito when she saw that cover <laughs> and realized she had not been invited. And you were pointing out that's not the only snub that these two have received lately. 
Right. So um, I was watching the Super Bowl and the ad that came on for the T-Mobile audition ad, which has some big, big stars in it, Bradley Cooper, Laura Dern, the two guys from Suits. I don't know their names. I've I never either. seen the show. but I, just t- Those two cute guys from, from Suits. Suits. Exactly. And I thought to myself, Meghan Markle must be watching this going, why wasn't my agent called? Mm-hmm. Why didn't I get that call? Why aren't I in Taylor Swift's box? Yeah. She wanted Taylor Swift on her podcast. Do you remember? Oh, that's she right. She wrote her a handwritten letter. She got no response. I forgot it. She must be asking herself. This is one of my new favorite buttons on my series thing. She must be asking herself the following question because this is how Meghan Markle sees every situation. It's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> Reese Witherspoon and Legally Blonde. <laughs> Let's discuss a crucial aspect of your financial health, your credit report. Hear me out. It's time to face a hard truth. Your credit report could be suffering due to unfounded reputation damaging claims. These are the kind of claims that simply will not hold up under rigorous scrutiny. And that's where Lexington Law Firm comes into play. For less than a hundred bucks, Lexington Law champions your cause using a comprehensive arsenal of consumer protection laws to fight for your best credit report. Lexington Law is fully equipped to challenge those exploitative creditors and aggressive debt collectors who obstruct your financial path. Go and visit LexingtonLaw.com for a complimentary credit assessment. Let their experts place your credit under the microscope, ensuring that it reflects your true financial story. Remember to mention that Megan referred you at LexingtonLaw.com. Empower yourself with the right team on your side. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.